What's up guys, my name is OJ and welcome to my top 10 must buy, must play, best Nintendo Switch games right now as of June 2022. Now this list could obviously change. We got Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Live Alive, and other great RPGs coming out. But this was the most requested video, so I wanted to get it done for you guys. In this video, you're going to see 10 RPGs that I feel that are the best on the platform for a variety of different reasons. Please make sure you stay tuned all the way through to the end because there's pretty much going to be a surprise. And of course, in the comment section below, let me know what your top 10 Nintendo Switch RPGs are. Now with all that out of the way, let's go in and get right into it. Let's start off with an honorable mention from Octopath Traveler and Square Enix. So this has the fantastic HD 2D graphics and presentation, which started off this whole HD 2D trend with Square Enix. Without this game being successful, we wouldn't see some of the other stuff that's coming down the line. This game has some of the best music and it has awesome gameplay plus HD rumble implementation. I also liked all the different travel stories and how it really showed their backstories and what they did. But really the backbone of this game is the fantastic art style with the HD 2D and the really fun, simple but fun gameplay that it ties all together. So honorable mention goes to Octopath Traveler. Now let's go ahead and get into the real list here and starting off at number 10 is Bravely Default 2 from Square Enix. So the art style is a bit weird at first, especially if you did not play the Bravely Default games on the Nintendo 3DS, but I think that it translates well over to the Nintendo Switch and what they're trying to do. I actually grew to love the different character designs in the game after I played it for quite some time. Now the game, speaking of playing it, Fantastic story, narrative, presentation, all of those things are really good. It really reminds me of a classic Final Fantasy style game, but evolved a little bit more to be a bit more modern at times too. So I really did love that. It has some nice twists and turns and it does a great job of kind of going to a peak and kind of taking to where you thought you might go, but then it goes in a different direction with what they do in the game. So I do love that about it. But I think the best thing about Bravely Default 2 is the job system. You have 20 plus classes in there. You have advanced tactics, super bosses, and tons of content. So what that allows you to do is to mix and match different skills, different abilities, different jobs. Anybody can play anything and their stats mix and match and change as you do that. So you can create the most efficient four team of killers ever in this game by mixing and matching and finding the different busted combinations in order to take out some of these overpowered super bosses that are just lying around anywhere from the very beginning of the game all the way throughout. So I think that's why Bravely Default 2 makes it to number 10 on my list and also that sweet beautiful music that it has too. Square Enix knows what they're doing when it comes to the HD 2D games music and Bravely Default 2 is also no exception to that. Number 9, Pokemon Legends Arceus from Nintendo. So this is probably the biggest innovation that I've seen from Nintendo and the Pokemon series or the Pokemon Company Game Freak in years. So I think that's why it deserves a top 10 spot on my list. The gameplay is superb. It's extremely fun to sneak up on a Pokemon, throw a different type of Pokeball, hit them right in the back of the head, get that nice HD rumble and lock in before the battle even starts. You can catch the Pokemon. This is great for this style of gameplay, a single player Pokemon game. And I think it fits really well. The battle mechanics with the agile style and the strong style just all tie in together with the sneaking around and with the different aspects of play, being able to use different Pokemon to explore the world in a very different way. I love what they've done with it. And honestly, it has an underrated soundtrack. The value is there as well. There's plenty of content in the game. I think the story is better than people give it credit for. And like I said, the music just really just fills up your ears with great remixes of Diamond and Pearl and also some new tracks as well. So I would definitely have to recommend Pokemon Legends Arceus to single player RPG fans that maybe don't play the Pokemon games. This one might do it for you and that's why it's number nine on my list. Number eight, Dragon Quest XI S, Echoes of an Elusive Age 
definitive edition from Square Enix. We're seeing a little bit of a trend here with Square Enix, right? So this game, it's classic, it's old school, but it's perfected. It has a great art style and presentation. I love the Akira Toriyama Unreal Engine 4. It looks, animates, and it's just a beautiful game on the Nintendo Switch. Now it has classic but addictive turn-based gameplay with tons of skills to master with the colorful cast of characters that all have their own ambitions and thoughts and the voice acting is very well implemented whether you're listening to it in English or you have the Japanese voice acting on. They do a great job of displaying emotion, displaying anger, when the characters feel a certain way. You can almost kind of feel it yourself when you play this game. So I do love the expressiveness of each of the characters. And the game is packed full of content with a very interesting story, which I'll admit didn't look too interesting to me at first. It looked kind of cliche for Japanese RPGs. RPGs, but it takes some big twists and turns as you keep playing and figure out what exactly is going on with Hero, the main character, and everyone else in this world. So I do love that about this game, and that's why Dragon Quest XI S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition is number 8 on my list. Number 7, Monster Hunter Rise from Capcom. Now this game has superior graphics on the Nintendo Switch. Some of the best, if not the best technical aspects of what the Switch can do with that RE engine is right there. It really does look good and they did a good job with the game's look and presentation, but I think even better than that maybe is the multiplayer implementation. This is phenomenal. There's barely any lag, and sometimes you might see some teleporting teammates here and there if their connection isn't great, but it's still implemented to where you don't really feel any lag or problems at all. And also, finding a match to play, instantly getting into something, inviting people into your game, all of that is handled beautifully with nice built-in tools right there in the game. So I have to give them credit for that. But even more so than anything, it's all about the gameplay with Monster Hunter, and this is where this game shines. You want to have a big bow and just shoot people up, you can do that. You want to light them on fire or electrocute them or do different properties, you can do that. You want to have twin blades that are super fast and fun to use, you can do that. You want a big old sword that you can swing around, you can do that as well. You want a gun that you can shoot rapid fire, sure, there's that. They have every type of weapon for any style of player and so much customization that it would take a lifetime to really max out and get everything with every weapon and every single style in the game and they're even adding more with Sunbreak so this game definitely deserves its number seven spot on my list. Number six, Fire Emblem Three Houses from Nintendo and Intelligent Systems. Now this game incredible music we have to talk about this and the presentation can be good at times yes the graphics aren't the best but the music and presentation are top notch i love me some fire emblem music and that is one of the best things about fire emblem three houses is the music it's going to keep you motivated push you to get through certain aspects make you look at what you're doing in this game and what it means to you and the characters and the emotion that's all tied into this game it's incredible now the gameplay is classic strategy rpg but it's evolved they do a lot of things differently with characters abilities and stats there's so many different characters that you can recruit level and grow it creates a very fun narrative of characters and mixing and matching them and seeing what they like and what they want to do in order to make them the best possible fighters that they can make now this game also has a multi-tiered story with three separate large paths that really tug on your heartstrings and just offer something that will make you feel a certain type of way and is well worth playing all the way through so for that that's why Fire Emblem Three Houses is number six on my list. Number five, Shin Megami Tensei V from Atlas. Now this is a hardcore Japanese RPG that doesn't hold your hand or hold back, even on the normal difficulty. Now I beat it on the hard difficulty, which was hard, like it's supposed to be, and it took me 150 hours to do so, but I loved 
every drop every second of this outside of that wind demon palace place that place sucks but outside of that this game was incredible it is so good it has great detail and graphics with the character models with the demons as some of the best music on the nintendo switch the guitar riffs in there the smooth sounds of just classic shin megami tensei smt mega 10 with some new style or new flavor on it is just really good now the best thing about this game though is the combat the gameplay and the demon fusion system you're going to constantly be getting new demons fusing those demons making new ones getting certain skills passing down skills from one demon to another demon and it's a very intricate system that gives you so much control over how you want to raise your demons what you want to do how you're going to play it it is fantastic i love what they've done and it just kept me playing and playing and playing trying to get through every super boss trying to get through every single thing so i can pretty much 100 percent it at the very beginning outside of the different endings which there are multiple endings in this game so there is some replay value with a new game plus system that's not bad as well but there's plenty of content to go through on the first playthrough now the story is a bit subtle or reserved at times but i think it's solid if you start looking at the world aspects of it and if you do all the content in the game and if you skip some stuff you're going to miss some major story points so i highly recommend if you haven't played it or even if you have and you missed some things go back and get everything because it does unravel even more with the story so that's the reason why shin megami tensei 5 is number five on my list number four triangle strategy from square enix now this game has superior storytelling and quality of life features for a strategy rpg i think i've never been more in control of knowing who this character is why they're doing what they're doing at least from when they tell me what they're doing what maybe their potential motivations are and everything i love the fact that in this game the storytelling is so well done and you can understand the characters so well because they add in great quality of life features to where you can press a button and see exactly who that character is where they're from and where they're aligned with i think that triangle strategy took a lot of different things from fire emblem three houses and smooth things out across the board which is why i do have it a bit higher it's just better and more well done in a lot of different features now the gameplay isn't quite as in-depth but i think that the kudos system because it's classic strategy rpg but the kudos system to where you can get extra points that you can use to get materials and to level up and to do different things in the game is so well done even though it's more simplistic i love it like a lot of japanese rpgs or a lot of strategy rpgs don't do this and kind of going back to the quality of life features why triangle strategy is so high up on my list it's the encampment the encampment is something that a lot of gamers kind of miss sometimes if you're playing it on the easier difficulties because you don't need it. But if you're playing on hard, it is absolutely vital and it's so good because it breaks up a lot of the long story that people talk about. You can go to the encampment at any time, even before a mission that you're heading into, you can go into the encampment, you can level up. You can upgrade your armor or your weapons, your class, you can fight, you can do all sorts of stuff. You can learn about the story, you can research. It is a phenomenal quality of life thing in the game. And I feel that every single Japanese RPG should have an encampment of some way, shape or form, or at least every single strategy RPG should have an encampment in there. And on top of that, the replay value with this game and the alternate endings and recruiting characters is so well done but the story like i talked about is probably the best singular based story on the nintendo switch that doesn't have a sequel yet they nailed it from every single aspect and everything and i'm definitely going to go through and get the different endings and see what else i can do in the game and that's why it's number four on my list number three xenoblade chronicles 2 plus xenoblade chronicles 2 torn of the golden country now this is an interesting thing that i've done here because 
Torna is essentially DLC, but it's also a standalone. But I feel that in order to make either one of these games complete, they kind of need each other. So that's the reason why I put it as a singular title in at number three here. And I feel that Xenoblade, the franchise, but especially with Torna and Xenoblade 2, has the best connected story-based type of deal on the Nintendo Switch. It really is. The music is absolutely incredible. The graphical style is anime and great. I do love that. The open-ended gameplay gets better and better as you understand and master its system. It's a bit complex at first, but as you keep playing, you understand it more and it gets more and more fun, even with somewhat of the pesky blade system in the game. But speaking of that pesky blade system in the game, Torna actually perfects the combat in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 to where you already have all of your rare blades or drivers, but it even adds a new, unique, innovative mechanic of being able to switch back and forth and get benefits and buffs and different access to abilities in the game. Whereas in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, one of them can just only stand back. The blades just stand back and give you power while you use the weapon. Torna, they flip it all around and it honestly makes the game better. It's addition by subtraction in this case because you don't have all the different rare blades and stuff, but they really hone in and focus on what makes Xenoblade Combat great, which is the battle mechanics. So that's the reason why I had to have Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Torna together on top of everything with the story and the narrative and the presentation and all of that. The gameplay really is superb once you get everything down. And for that reason, that's why Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Tone of the Golden Country are number three on my list. Number two, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition plus Future Connected from Nintendo. Now, this is another unique action RPG that takes an already good game from the Wii and makes it much better. Not a little bit better, but much better with the quality of life features and also the new content in the game. Now, once again, I'll say this with Xenoblade Chronicles 2, the best connected story-based game on the Nintendo Switch. If you understand the story of Xenoblade Chronicles 1 after you've beaten it and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 with Torna, your mind is going to be blown. Most people don't quite get it. You kind of have to look at some videos or play the game again or really pay attention. But once you understand all of the story elements and what the potential is for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 that's coming up, it really just elevates Xenoblade's story to a whole new level. Honestly, the endings will blow your mind if you haven't played it at this point. Now, Let's get to the combat though. I think that the combat, once again, has an addition by subtraction type of thing. Xenoblade 2 went a little bit too much in, but Xenoblade Chronicles 1 is just enough. I think that it has a phenomenal gimmick, a better gimmick than the Blades with this one, and that's the whole Monado and seeing the future and being able to prevent that. It's within the story, and it's also within the combat, which is why I think that Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition has a very solid core when it comes to story and also gameplay that's more on pace and balanced than any other Xenoblade game out there. So I do love that about the game. And of course, there's tons of replay value, tons of content, but the story is just as good as anything else in this game. And with Future Connected, it opens up some other possibilities with other Xenoblade games that I won't name for spoiler reasons, but man, it really is awesome. So Xenoblade Chronicles makes it to number two on my list. And in at number one, which is probably a shocker to a lot of you guys, Astral Chain from Nintendo. Now, this to me is the best looking game on the Nintendo Switch. Now, what I mean by that is graphics and art style. Now, in this whole top 10 that I've been discussing the games, I've talked about best graphics or has a good look to it, you know, maybe it's not quite as good as this or that, but this game blends the anime, art style, ghost in a shell, kind of more of the gothic look, dark look to it with great graphics, technical graphics as well, which creates a perfect blend and a very unique and innovative look on the Nintendo Switch. So I do have to give it those props. Now, it's also, from a gameplay perspective, 
extremely innovative. Essentially, you have your character, which you're basically a futuristic police squad. You have your character, but then you also have this legion, which is caught from what you are fighting against. But you have multiple different versions of the legions that all have their own powers, abilities, equipment, and different things that you can do on top of your own character, which you can upgrade with your weapons and everything. Once you understand this gameplay loop and how it works and string together combos and even having up to three people on screen that you're controlling or at least put out there with two legions unchaining them, doing a combo, hitting more combos with that character, you jumping in yourself, it creates this thing that you feel like you're like big brained, that you can just do anything combat wise in the game. So I love that about it. It really is one of the best, or if not the best thing about it. You have complete control of your gameplay style, and the different types of legions that they give you all serve a purpose, dealing a lot of damage, more defensive, you have more acrobatic, long distance, fast. I mean, it's all just about how you wanna play or how you wanna implement it during certain bosses, or if you wanna go solo with one, you can power them up. There's all sorts of cool stuff with this game and the combat so i kind of had to give it the number one spot on here because of how unique the action rpg combat is in here i've never played anything else like this ever i think there's some games that are similar like bayonetta and stuff that they've done but the style of this game is just completely unique and especially for the nintendo switch and what they do here plus you have a good length campaign, difficulty, replay value. And while not everybody loves the investigation scenes, I actually liked them and thought they were a good change of pace and break up to the action in the game. So Astral Chain surprisingly makes it to my number one spot as I was evaluating everything here. Thank you guys so much for watching my top 10 Nintendo Switch RPGs, must buy, must play, best RPGs, however you wanna phrase it. Let me know what your 10 best RPGs are. Make sure you drop a comment, subscribe if you're someone new, click that notification bell, and we will see you for the next video. Peace.